something that I had wanted to talk about. Just got home from the night shift from the hospital. And so as more information comes out of the work that Dr. Fauci was doing under the American government. So I'm talking about gain of function. So gain of function is defined as a mutation that confers a new or enhanced activity on a problem. So when it comes to gain of function on a, vec you know, on a virus, the mutation would be either to confer something new or to enhance a protein, excuse me. So it either gives a virus a, a new spin or it takes something that a virus already does and then it amplifies it, making it much stronger, right? By comparison to a loss of function, which, uh, which are more common resulting in reduced or abolished protein function. For example, like let's say HIV. In the very beginning, you know, people died in the 80s, there was no treatment, etc. And then one of the reasons why they say that people with HIV live longer is because eventually the virus, you know, decides to, you know, eventually it mutates because it wants to replicate, it wants to exist. And so if it kills its host right away, well, then the virus itself dies as well. And so typically this is, as it says, the norm, more common, because the virus wants to exist. And so it eventually learns to live with, it, with its host for longer periods of time. So that it could replicate and spread whereas uh this of course is man-made and so now that we're learning that dr fauci perhaps was responsible for even he even though he, he said the exact same thing in relation to the flu and so my question is this that i really don't see anybody talking about since overwhelmingly we know that the disease targeted patients, people who were overweight, right? As it says right here, that 27% of the people who died were overweight, while 50% of them were obese. So my question is, was the new function to target individuals who were overweight? Now, if the narrative is that, you know, what are they, you know, they're always, they're constantly talking about uh, global warming and there's going to be food shortages and there's a drought going on, etc. And if that was the narrative, well, then in terms of eugenics, in terms of eugenics, the people that you would not want around would be obese people, right? Because these are what they were, what they would refer to as uh, the useless eaters, right? Because they take more out of society from, in terms of the resources, is primarily food by comparison to what they add to society, which is why it also impacted many of the elderly. And so if that is the case, then one of the questions I would imagine that, you know, Rand Paul would ask was if you were working on this particular disease via gain of function did you mutate it target elderly and the obese sounds like a good question to me something i would want to know but what about you i mean when you when you when you start to delve in i mean i had a really good teacher in biology he was a german professor but when we used to get into these deep discussions about what went on during Nazi Germany and eugenics, etc. And so you heard about the different experiments that this individual did, obviously primarily revolving around the Jews and what he could do uh, to advance science, right? That was kind of part of the narrative, the, the different things that they would try on the children, on pregnant women, on the elderly, see what they could endure this was this was done uh during nazi germany times and so in our times these are very good questions to ask i have a feeling you know none of these things of course will be talked about most people are way too uh enthralled with the whole fire fauci sort of narrative and of course joe biden has said that under no circumstance is he going to fire him in fact if you if you look back even 
Trump had the opportunity to fire him, and he said under no circumstance was he going to fire him either. Which, of course, leads me to believe that you were probably in on it too. Regardless of what people might think, if you actually just look back at some of the stuff that was said under Trump, remember, who was the one who was champion, championing uh, you know, never before in, you know, in history has you know, such an achievement been done, that very same achievement that is now being weaponized against you under his administration, not under Biden. In my opinion, it was just more of a good cop, bad cop. That's it. You had one guy who told you everything you wanted to hear, all the while implementing all the things that were going to be snares for you under this administration. Which is why it wouldn't surprise me if he actually got back in in 2024 to kind of calm things down while the next stage, of course, would be set up for the American people, which is just basically slavery at the end of the day, when you actually think about it. But I mean, the monetary system has been that way for quite some time. But that's probably a topic for another discussion, which maybe I'll cover in a different video. I was talking about, I was talking about that with some of my colleagues last night. With one of the PACU nurses, we were having a conversation talking about this very thing. How, well, maybe we'll go through it here. How literally everybody in America is, in essence, a slave. And the reason that I say that is just basically based off of the monetary system. Because the Bible make it, makes it very plain. Where the Bible says that the borrower is a slave to the lender. And so, even though you might not necessarily borrow money for yourself, but the American politicians borrow money in your name, which is why you have the, you know, the universal, uh, what is it, the, the debt clock, right? And so you look at the debt clock, and that basically lets you know how indebted America is, right? And that debt is, in essence, repaid via your labor. And so, when Joe Biden is basically, in essence, printing all of this money, he is, in essence, selling your labor. He's, in essence, selling you into slavery deeper and deeper with the trillions of dollars that are being, in essence, printed at this time. And so all that it means is that Americans have to pay back that debt via your labor. That is literally the definition of slavery, which is why the very last vestige of freedom that Americans hold which is the your autonomy for your body, right? Which is why the government and doesn't really force you and hold you down and make you and make you take it because they want you to recognize and give up your last liberty, which is what you take into your body. Which is why they offering all of these you know, we'll offer you money, we'll offer you a truck, we'll offer you some weed, you want a cheeseburger, like some tickets, we'll give how about a concert, right? That's why they're offering you all of these things, is because they can't just hold you down and, and force you, in essence, to give up slavery in here. Yes, you might be able to put somebody in chains, but in here, the individual will still be free. And that's the whole point. The whole point is to get Americans to up here give up their liberty. And once you force somebody to give up their liberty in here, then you can get them to do anything, which is why it's so very important to look at it that way. Which is why literally they'll print money. They're literally giving people lottery, a million dollars, five million dollars. You know, what's it going to take for you to give up your liberty? And that's why I, most of my, a lot of my colleagues that I talk to, they're just like, when I, when I explain it to them, you know, that simply about what's going on, they're just like, same, they draw the same conclusion that I have. I got to get off this plantation. Because everybody, you know, well, you know, black Americans refer to themselves and their ancestors as slaves, but literally everybody that is on the American plantation is a slave. You're all indebted, right? That's why the Bible can refer to it in such a way that the person who in essence is a borrower becomes a slave to the lender. And who is your American politician in essence borrowing from to enslave you, which are the central banks. And so you in essence become a slave to the central banks. It's not like you can uh, choose not to pay this debt back, which is why, of course, they're always talking about raising taxes, right? And of course, under the, under the, which is why you look at the housing market. The housing market is a, is a perfect example of the communistic slavery that Americans, in essence, are going through right now. 
where the Federal Reserve will print money to give to companies like BlackRock, who will then rent you the very same houses that they are buying. So in essence, you are being forced to labor to pay back dollars to rent homes that you just labored for. That is literally what is going on. You are literally watching America fall deeper and deeper into slavery. And it's very obvious when you just when you just look at what's going on, which is why all these houses are being bought up. They're primarily being bought up by companies like BlackRock. They're primarily being bought up by hedge funds. And the hedge funds is getting the money from the Federal Reserve. And the Federal Reserve forces you to pay back that money via your labor. And then they turn around and rent you that home that you have to perpetually pay off. Your forefathers would be rolling over in their graves if they realized what you've done to their country. All the hard work, the blood, the sweat, and the tears, the wars, the sacrificing of the young to go to war with literally countries like this in the past, just not even a hundred years later, to see their children fall victim to the very same government, the same, the same, the very same style of government that you are now literally lying down for. The collapse is going to be great when it comes. I am surprised that Americans are taking this so lightly. In other countries, they are literally rioting nonstop. You have the people in Myanmar who are literally fighting with sticks and plastic shields against military men with guns. They're young. This is easy. You can look this up on YouTube. Their young men created a pseudo army of like a couple of hundred of young men who are willing to die for their country. And Americans are just sitting back like hoping they get another stimmy check as they literally fall deeper and deeper into slavery.